Brexit. Yeah. My, my, my cousin tells me I ought to apply for my Irish pa- passport real soon because there's a bit of a queue. Are, are you are your is your family Republic of Ireland or, or Northern Ireland? Republic. Ah, very, very south. Limerick and Kerry. Way Good. south. Good. You guys are fine. Uh, but but in anticipation for all the shit, there's a run on Republic of Ireland passports now because Scotland is calling for a referendum to pull out. Sinn Féin in Northern Ireland is calling to secede. No, they want to reunify, which is like, wow. They want to reunify. Some of them want, not everybody in Northern Ireland wants that. So let's just kick off the troubles all over again. That sounds fun. So given this shit storm, there's a run on Republic of Ireland passports right now for people who are eligible. Well, So people can... Get the fuck off the sinking ship. Well, so to speak. well done, UK. Well done. I mean, who knows what's going to happen now? They're looking at ways they can maybe get out of it. <laughs> people are calling for a second vote. What the, killed me was the number of people that like, well, yeah, I voted to leave, but I, I didn't think it would matter. And I'm like, America? Pay attention because this is how you get President Trump. You know, it's it th- when there's... you do the troll vote thing. The funny thing is, they count all of them, even the ones where you write "lol." Some some people checked both the boxes. The referendum had two boxes: stay or leave. They checked them both. Then they don't. That vote doesn't count. Then, right? It was really close. And the, there, it was fifty-one to forty-nine. It was like really close. And there's also you, I was watching I was CNN watching, that night. No. I was watching. Do you know Richard Quest? No. The British CNN guy. He got arrested like five years ago in Central Park with like pockets full of cocaine and meth. He's completely insane. But he's the CNN international business guy. <sighs> so he was on the overnight. Well, it wasn't overnight there, but overnight here. And you could just, I swear, he was getting drunker as the night went on. Man, I would love to have a job where I could have pockets of cocaine and meth and not get fired. Yeah. That'd be nice. But it there, there's even an official term now for people who are regret. They, they, they want to try and scramble the out regrets, of it. The regrets. The regrets. No, no, no. I also saw the term braxies. Oh, that's not as good. That's not as good as the regrets. It regrets it. Yeah. What is it with all? Regrets it is harder to say, though. Yeah. Braxies is easier to say. It's it's. (laughs) I have a friend that lives over there who just moved back. She grew up there, moved here for a few years, moved back, and she voted to leave. And I'm not sure exactly what her reasons are. I haven't actually asked, but yeah, she's been pretty staunch. So, and she just opened a business. So, I mean, hopefully it works out. They're saying it might not be as bad as they projected, that the markets might recover quicker than they expected. I mean, who knows? It's seriously uncharted territory. They kind of do that with the markets because it's like, you know, you, you tell the the kid when he's going to get a shot, it's not going to hurt. Yeah. It's going to hurt. The only thing they have promised is that Game of Thrones will not be affected. <laughs> Did you see that press release? Like the next day, HBO was like, Game of Thrones is going to be fine. And I'm like, good. I'm sure everybody was super worried about that. That's like, the most pressing issue. Okay, you've just dropped 20%, but I'm sure they were super worried. Like, I'm sure, like, I would be bummed if Game of Thrones went away, especially after this week. But I don't think it was the top priority on anybody's mind. But you say that, you say that, but there are people who didn't even understand the the top search quest on Google the day after was, what is the EU? That was coming from Britain. Somebody got really mad at me on Twitter for pointing that out. They always get really mad when you point out things they don't like. So, yeah, I don't they, they probably understand the entire Targaryen bloodline all the way back to, you know, fucking Ar- Aris the first and whatnot. 
But they don't know what the fuck the EU is. What have we done? Let's um, just let's just hope we don't get Trump now. Oh, wouldn't that that would What just... I think is funny is the media is talking about this giant wave of populism that's rocketing Donald Trump and the Leave movement. And I'm like, it's funny how populism is the new word for racism. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's... Donald Trump is leading a populist movement. He's leading a racist, misogynist, yeah, kinda... anti-poor people movement. But sure, populist. I thought populist meant like the bourgeoisie. And Donald Trump is everything but that. But yeah. Words don't mean things anymore. Literally now literally means not literally. So why the fuck not? You know how many angry comments we're going to get about so, talking politics? I don't give a fuck. Because I have to live in this that, goddamn... That terror used to be funny, but now she's really political. She's just a feminazi bitch. I have to live in this fucking country. They can eat my dick. All of my dick. My entire dick. Not your entire dick. Each week, Catherine... Where you dead air audience go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And hey, you know what? You were talking about that whole racism thing that, that was going on with the Trump and the populist and Yeah. One of the, the, the nasty side effects of of the kind of shit that Trump has brought up is that it's emboldened others. Yeah, it's made them think it's okay. To the point where um, a, a, a congressional candidate, Rick Tyler, took out an advertisement this week. Oh, the billboard? Are the we doing billboard. the billboard? Make I don't want to do the billboard. America white again. This was an actual billboard on the side of the road in the fucking, oh God, a Tennessee man. Funny story. Fun fact, since we par apparently a lot of people don't know this, America didn't start out white. No. Crazy thing. There were these people called the Native Americans who were here fucking first. And long I story short, we showed up and gave them beads and smallpox and then said, get the fuck to the shittiest piece of land in these three states. Tennessee man running for a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives ran on a simple platform. Make America white again. Billboards along Highway in Benton, a town of almost 50 miles east of Chattanooga. Don Mr. Tyler's slogan, Mr. Tyler, an independent who is hoping to unseat a Republican incumbent Chuck Fleischman, immediately sparked criticism for his overtly white supremacist spin on Trump's pledge. And that's not the only billboard he took out. He has another one, too. A um, little more subtle. I have a dream. And I don't know how well you can see this picture. That is a, uh, um, a picture of the White House flying about 11 billion Confederate flags. I don't, I don't like to advocate violence. But that's the sort of thing that should get you a punch in the mouth. That's that's literally that's murder. You know, no ill will to the guy's family, but he should get punched in the mouth. That's just one time. That's just literally enough. that is Give him a bloody lip to remember this by. This is in fact treason. Because if you remember, the Confederate States were treason. They lost the Civil War. Oh God! They lost. I just I have to put up. The Look, I just, I mean, it just... Also, that's a motherfucker of a thing to do with a Martin Luther King quote, and when we currently have a black dude in that White House. I will point out, fortunately, all the billboards have been taken down, mainly because everybody who saw them went, what the fuck? Which, that gets... I, I was hoping you would say because they got graffitied in record no. time, just covered in spray-painted dicks. No, nope, they, they were all taken down. 
But the fact that he felt bold enough and confident enough that other people that he could find other like-minded individuals to support his candidacy the is these fucking strawberry shit that shitsicles think this shit's okay now. Oh, we can. It's open. We can all come out now. It's fine. It's okay. It's Racism okay. Is now. The new yes, Grady. Yes. That's ironic. Yes, Grady. Yes. Oh, what? I hear him. What? Do He's you like, want? I don't like it either. What do you want? You want to come be on the show? Or I do. Want I want to give that guy a piece of my mind. You just, or you just want to annoy me? He's probably just annoying me. That's he does this. He'll come over and meow at me, and then <laughs> come here. Oh, come here. Come here. Uh, come on. I got you. We we have we have passed out over here. Oh, oh big stretch. Oh. How did you get so heavy? Oh, big, furry, well, heavy thing. Well, come here. Will you give me treats to be cute on the internet? <laughs> I stole I, tr strawberry shitsicles is not one I made up. I stole that from Jennifer Lawrence. Mm. I can't take credit. <sighs> well, that girl's national treasure. We have some more conventional stupid, but this is. This is for all of you who have to work retail and you have all had the, do if you have not yet, you will. If you already have, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've all had to deal with this customer who thinks they are a comedian, who Ugh. thinks they are fucking Boy, funny. Oh, it's it must be free. <laughs> it's funny you should say that, Tara. Oh no. Man tries to scan his genitals at Seattle grocery store, gets arrested. About 5 p.m. Wednesday, employees at the UFC grocery store say 31-year-old man was standing at a self-checkout machine. He was laughing to himself as he put his genitals through the scanner and left only to return five hours later. He then got into a confrontation with employees who told him to leave, he refused and got into a shoving match with security. Later, police arrested the man. He was jailed for investigation of indecent exposure. You've used a self-checkout, right? Yes. It's not a hand scanner. No. It's like this. Yes. So he had to de-pants himself. Yes. Straddle the thing and hump this... Yep. Machine. Yep. <sighs> yes, he did. Just to get radiation shot into his balls. And laughing to himself. You all know that guy. You. It's not just retail. This is everybody. You know that guy who thinks his jokes are really hilarious and no mm -hmm. one else is laughing, but he won't mm -hmm. stop. Mm hmm. He doesn't take the cue that no one else thinks he's fucking funny. And th this is the part where it's really hard to be a retail employee because you really want to walk up and be like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, sir. You can't just buy two chickpeas and one green bean. They're by the pound. Yeah, I think you, you, you're, you're a little underweight. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, and I love that he came back and they told him to leave and he started shoving security. So this is one but of those. Like, you are, as a retail employee, not paid enough to deal no. with people's disgusting bodily functions. With the chicks in the fitting room who peel the protective thing out of the bottom of the swimsuit and stick it to the wall. With the people, yeah. With the people that hand you their dirty tissues or their child's dirty diaper. With the fucking asshole who humps the grocery scanner and almost certainly has some kind of dick rot because... <laughs> Come on. Uh, somebody's got to clean that shit. It's not you. And like, they don't, they, they're not going to like you anymore. Like, no, service people don't want $15 an hour for flipping a burger. We want $15 an hour for dealing with you. Yeah. How hard is it? It's, it's pretty fucking hard. Cause it's pretty fucking hard. Yeah. We're fucking idiots. We get biohazards. We do fucking family therapy for free. Like... It's not for flipping the burgers that we want the $15. It's 
Speaking of all, another segment of our populace who are sadly overworked. Why is it whenever we get firefighters on the show, it's never about they have to take care of a fire? It's, it's never about them rescuing adorable kittens from a fire. No, it's never about a fire because everyone thinks firefighters, they just sit around and they wait. And they, they wait for the alarm to go off. They hop on the truck. They got a little spotted dog. They go off and they save people. There's another thing firefighters get called for all the Although fucking the time. thing is firehouse cats. The Dalmatian has gone out of vogue. I don't now firehouse cats are the thing and they all have an Instagram. I think Grady would be a lousy firehouse cat because he hides from everything. But that's the new, I don't know why we've switched from Dalmatians to cats, but, <laughs> excuse me, apparently firehouse cats are the new thing. I follow three of them on Instagram. It's, it's never about, you know, the fighting the fires anymore. No, no, what they're most, stop playing with my earphones, Grady. What they're most well known for, of course, now is pulling people out of things they jam themselves into. Whoa, Tara, 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 Tara. Stop with the, the, the bang, 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 bang. That shows Sorry, up on the recording. Yes, we can hear that. Sorry. It's very Mike loud. Mike said a thing. I was trying to reply to him. It's very loud. In fact, we need to, we need to like. I was trying to type really quiet. We need to isolate your mic from the desk is part one of the things we need to do soon oh this is my mic looks like a little rocket ship yeah we need to, to like put it on something or, or get a mic stand for it because yeah but i do type loudly i'm sorry because i type with these two fingers and this is not for a reason it's just for some reason that's the fingers i type with but we have a story tara trying sorry. to trying to segue to the damn story Firefighters rescue Alabama teen girl from giant Barney head. 15-year-old girl trapped for a harrowing 45 minutes was rescued by Trustville firefighters. But Darby Risner wasn't stuck in a cave or an overturned car. She was stuck in the head of Barney the dinosaur. The big plush purple head of Barney the dinosaur. The head was closing on me, Darby told uh, Alabama.com. It was a stuck in a small place and can't get out panicking. All began Sunday night as a joke on her friends. The prank, however, went awry and the joke ended up being on Darby. Darby and a group of girlfriends were spent a night at a party after church. While waiting for her friends to come downstairs, she spotted the, the Barney head, which her pastor bought spot seven years ago at a going out of business sale. Since then, the body suit had been lost, but members have passed around the Barney head as an uh, as need basis for whatever reason. Okay, sure. Like you do. Darby thought. Who has he passed around the Barbie, the Barney head? Darby thought, I'm going to scare them when they come downstairs. She put on the Barney head, and when she sat down on the sofa waiting for her, it dropped. It slipped over her shoulders. When they finally came down, she got up and realized that it dropped so low, she couldn't get it off. It was digging into her. How skinny is this girl? Firefighters tried to pull off the head, but their efforts were to no avail. They ultimately uh, made some release cuts in the back of the head, relieved pressure, and removed Barney, Barney from Tarby. Actually, How skinny were you? Can you imagine you're at the fire station and you get this call? We, she got she got she got stuck in a what now? She's stuck in a dinosaur. Oh. Ma'am, have what? you been drinking? Ma'am, you know it's a crime to make fraudulent calls to nine one one, right? My daughter's stuck in a dinosaur. Grady's attacking the darkness. What are, they, what are you doing back there, Doofball? You get that darkness, Grady. You know, oh, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Grady. What? <laughs> I is attacking the darkness. I just, it, I would kind of hate to be a firefighter. Is it's never about the kittens in the trees or the saving life. No, no, it's some dumbass 15-year-old. I'm still marveling at, like, 
Like I was a pretty skinny teenager. You wouldn't know it to look at me now. But I was a pretty skinny teenager. And I still think, I don't think I could get something like you have a really small shoulder span and or no collarbone. Or how big was that neck hole? Like, was it made for the juggernaut? I'm also a little concerned that the church is just keeping Barney's severed head to pass around on an as-need basis, according to the story. Well, what kind of church is it? <laughs> Maybe that's their god. I love you, you love me, we're a happy family. Maybe yeah, maybe it's the Church of Barney. No. No. Good God. I, I, that, this you don't is, want to hear the good word of Barney? I, uh, no, I don't. I fortunately was a little old when Barney came out. Thankfully, I I was miss... babysitting, though, when Barney came out. I, I, I skipped that era, thank God. But why, why would you, why, why? Just keeping Barney's severed head around. Of course, you know, if it were me and I was in the church, everybody would come in one Sunday and there'd be Jesus on the cross with the Barney head on it and I would get excommunicated. But that's just me. Um, moving along. It's it's hard out there right now. It's 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 everybody's like, oh, the economy's fine. Yeah, well, not not great for everybody, and I understand that. But sometimes, and, and you know, you do what you can. A, a lot of us come up with creative ways to to make a living out here, um, in including like saying fuck on the internet, for yeah, instance. Yeah, including drug dealers who apparently now have have a new model. It's it's not working out so well. Um. Police say man went door to door looking to sell cocaine. Oh. Casper man faces charges after he went door to door Monday asking residents if they wanted to buy cocaine from him. Thomas Avery Glenn is charged with possession of meth, possession of cocaine, and possession of controlled substance with the intent to deliver. Glenn, 56, was being held in the detention center as of Tuesday morning. Woman called police about 6.30 p.m. to report a man had approached her in her yard asking if she wanted to get high. She said the man had told her he had cocaine and repeatedly asked if she wanted to buy drugs from him. She told the man to leave. She said she told police yeah. she saw the man walk across the street and knock on the door of her neighbor's house. I heard they were working on some new Girl Scout cookie flavors. I don't think cocaine was one of the flavors, though. I mean, they'd be funded forever. You know, you could charge for a box of cocaine cookies. Black Raptor, ding dong, cocaine calling. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, that, that is, oh my God. You Do you have just... a few minutes to talk about our savior cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bet right uh, now there's, there's a uh, whole, there's Jehovah's Witness reading this article and going, you know. That guy is, that guy is working our turf. Well, no, he's like, he might be on to something. Hey, Larry, what if instead of pamphlets, we give out cocaine? You think they'll let us Although in we, then? I'm pretty sure the Jehovah's Witness wouldn't let you do that. I don't think they're even allowed to drink. Well, they wouldn't be the ones doing it. They'd be giving it to other people. So Yes, but you have to... You, you're not going to do a very good job of bringing others into your religion if you're fucking it up for them. I mean, I guess if you're creating tragedy so you can save them. But the thing is, <laughs> God don't really go for that. Uh, I mean, like, God don't really go for you setting the fire so you can be the hero for putting it out. You got to admire this guy's moxie. I mean, it's I, enterprising. I keep thinking of uh, Orlando Jones character from Office Space. 
comes around selling the magazines. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, look, I, I used to be in tech support. This is better money. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 I'll give him points for trying something new, but I'll take those points away because what did he think was going to fucking happen? Well, clearly he thought some people were going to buy some cocaine. <laughs> Obviously. It's, 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 it's a no thank you situation. Um, moving along. Your little toes are falling off the tower, Dottie. Has, has, oh, your little head is falling off the tower. Has Patrick done any of those um, graduation ceremonies they do in, like, grade school and middle school now? Oh, yeah. It's... For his preschool graduation, he got an inflatable guitar at the ceremony. I think it had something to do with a song they performed. It's Which has always just baffled me how we have, My like... My niece Holly just graduated elementary school. That And that, that, that confuses me. It's like, you don't have to graduate every fucking thing. Well, they call it moving up day. She had her moving up ceremony. Did they make a, a, one of those um, videos and, and give it to the kids after it was over of the, of the service? That I don't know. Well, they did it in, uh, in Israel at a, a six, bunch of sixth graders. They had a graduation. Although I don't understand why you graduated sixth grade, but they got a whole different kind of graduation at the same time. Israeli sixth graders accidentally given porn DVD instead of graduation video. Oh no. In a strange turn of events, a DVD was supposed to portray a sixth grade graduation party accidentally contained excerpts of a pornographic film. DVD was given to students at the elementary school in honor of National Hug Day and for the end of, of the school year. According to the report, Parents of the children were quick to warn the other parents, writing in the class uh, WhatsApp group comments such as, I'm shocked, how could such a thing happen? And, quote, this is a scandal. The school responded by saying the DVD maker made the DVDs, which used discs which contained a pornographic scene at the end of the film. They would not do, and they would do everything to make sure nothing of the sort happened again. Okay, number one, that's not how DVDs get made. That's a, yeah, you can't reuse them, can you? No, not if you not if you're uh, no. So that's a lie to start off yeah. with. That is a lie. This was a Tyler Durden type situation. Yes, it was. Yeah, yes, yes, it yes, it was. Um Was it at least schoolgirl porn? <laughs> I mean If you're gonna do it, do it right. This now, if this had been like 10 years ago, maybe I would be like this kind of fucked up. But it is 2016. If it was VHS, I could see it. Because that could happen with VHS. That's the giant subplot and train spotting. But on the other hand, this is 2016. And there, there, it's not like when, when, when we were little and porn was only, you know, in, in magazines. Yeah. And and maybe they were on like really shitty gifts on like the nineteen ninety three dial up internet or whatever. On Prodigy. On Prodigy. Oh yeah. Oh, back in the day. But you know, now it'd be like they got a porn video that's sort of like getting junk mail, honestly. It's yeah. fucking everywhere. These days, kids will see more tits before they're 12 than... Well, listen, that's not the kind of dodgeball sixth graders should be playing. <laughs> uh, I just, it's, 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 I'm like, porn is everywhere now. I was, I was thinking about the story, my first impulse going, oh, that's kind of off. Wait, no, they're 12... They've seen porn. They've seen lots of porn. They've seen more porn than I ever saw at their age. They know more about sex than I never knew at their age. They have seen so many things go into so many holes by now. I, I don't know about that. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. 
I mean, you can, if you are at all an attentive parent, you can control what your child is seeing and, you know, what they're able to receive. I, you know, I, it's, uh, eventually at some point we're going to drive up the fucking McDonald's and, and you know how they have those little, those new L- LED LCD menus? Mm-hmm. It, 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 there's just going to be tits on there. It's going to be Birdie the Early Bird's tits right there. We, 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 porn is everywhere. <laughs> porn is everywhere. They're just going to be giving out dildos and the Happy Meals. They will. They totally will. Have a butt plug shaped like Grimace. I mean, Grimace pretty much is shaped like a butt plug. <laughs> he kind of is. He is. Yeah. And don't tell me the Hamburglar isn't into some kinky shit. Yeah. We have one last one this week. Oh boy, these these motherfuckers. And you can. And the fry guys do kind of look like pasties. You can tell from the picture on this story that these guys, it's this, they look exactly how you would expect people in this story to look. A did a douche! Look at that. It hasn't loaded yet. It should load, damn you. And I'll, 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 I'll point out that picture is being taken from a selfie stick. Yeah. Strike see, one. See if I can make it any bigger so you guys can see it. Oh, no, I can't. Strike two. You pretty much all have the same haircut. They all have the same the haircut. The hairline. Two San Diego men have been convicted of disrupting a Chicago-bound Southwest Airlines flight. You're thinking, oh, well, that's just a disruption. No, no. Let's get to what they did. Uh, Jonathan Khalid Petrus and Wisdom Imad Shaker were convicted Thursday in Amarillo, Texas, of interference with a flight crew and aiding and abetting. Each faces up to 20 years. An affidavit says uh, Petrus, Shaker, and four other men boarded flight 1522 in San Diego last August and sat together. Prosecutors say the men became aggressive, used obscene language when denied alcohol, and refused instructions from flight attendants. Violence eventually, eventually diverted the plane to Amarillo. All six were detained when the jet landed at Rick Husband International Airport. They were fighting with the flight attendants, this is one of the pastors, because the flight attendant wouldn't allow them alcohol because they were already being loud during the flight. And they called her a racist and called her a pig. And I, then I got into a confrontation with them and they were calling me names and flicking me off. Prosecutors say the men refused to put up their seat backs and tray tables when asked and used profanity when a flight attendant was taking drink orders. The flight attendant asked them to quiet down. They responded they could be as loud as they want. When the men were denied alcohol, they became aggressive by lunging forward at a flight attendant. All of these things are things you cannot do on a plane. Yet, people do not understand how much your civil liberties go the fuck away when you're in an airport or airplane situation now. No, no. They like you get on an airplane, they own your ass. You cannot. They could be. As, you cannot be as loud as you want on the plane. No, no you can't. You certainly cannot assault the flight attendant. Yep. They don't like that. That's, they just. They just hose the place down with asshole, didn't they? I mean, is it like, did you not know, did you notice anyone else standing up and yelling and fucking with people on the plane? Or was it just no, you? you? see, they're special. They're special. Boy, are they because special. Them. And just, uh, the, the hair is what's killing me here. Yeah, they have the it's, official. It's like a uniform. Haircut. It's like a fucking uniform. Yeah, it's the official douchebag haircut. Do they just go into the, to Vidal Sassoon and say, you know what? I want to look like the biggest dick that ever walked the earth. Can do! <laughs> we got that. We can do that for you. I want to look exactly like every other fucking asshole doing shots at the bar. It's it's a plane. It's not it's not a flying party. Mm-mm. You saw Iron Man too many Unless times. Unless you rented yes. a private jet. Is then, it your yeah, plane? Whatever the fuck you want. Is it your plane? 
Are you Tony Stark? No. Sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up. Yeah. Pretty much how it goes. What was it Rollins said? Uh, one of his, his spoken words. He's like, I wish the, 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 the planes had a sit the fuck down, su shut the fuck up light. <laughs> Attention, the captain has turned on the sit the fuck up down, the shut the fuck up light. So uh, we're going to need you to sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up. When that, 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 God, we need that. We just, we, yeah, we do. That, that, because <laughs> there's no need for a no smoking light. We just take that little I light off. I feel like until we can get back to a place where people have basic etiquette and courtesy again, we just all need to be wearing shock collars. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's your policy. So that, so that, yeah, everybody. So that when you do something assholey, you can get fucking shocked. And yes. as soon as you get shocked, like more than three times in, say, a week, you lose your rights to shock anybody else. You don't get to shock anybody else. Because you're obviously an asshole. I this I, I and then give it give it five ten years of that we'll have a polite society again. I don't think this is a very feasible option, Tara. It would work. No, it wouldn't. We would make America polite again. <laughs> no, by force. You you're trusting the people to do that, not to troll each other with the fucking shock collar. No, because you lose your shocking privileges. If you if you fuck up, I, I know this is tangent, but I have to show you guys this right now. Like, this is how we're sleeping. Yeah, Grady does that. We're yeah. just we're just hanging completely off the damn tower, up to our shoulder, because Dottie has taken over the whole damn thing. I've just been watching her gradually go further and further over the edge as we've gone on. <laughs> and I'm waiting until I'm going to have to catch her. So I, I guess the first thing we learned this week is um, you can't... Oh, they'll only be very small shocks. They won't be big enough to give anybody a heart attack. You alarmists. Tara, you put too much thought into this. They'll be very small shocks, like you, a joy buzzer. You've put far too much thought into this. Well, people are jerks. We've learned this week, you cannot, in fact, be as loud as you want on the plane. No, that's, you cannot. That's not allowed. We've learned I that... Tease your we, we've learned porn is much like cat hair. It will eventually get everywhere. <laughs> and, yeah, I guess. You... It, Okay. You'll find it in places you can for that. You'll find it in places you never imagined possible. That sounds more like glitter. But it's true. We've learned that um a little enterprise goes a long way, but not when it's an illegal enterprise. Yeah. I understand adapting to market fluctuations. I understand trying to update your business model, but you're selling cocaine. You can't do I mean, that. Kudos for taking initiative. It's it's not fucking Amway, okay? It's it's cocaine. We've learned firefighters have a very thankless job. Yeah. If you ever meet a firefighter in real life, I don't care if it's for any, if you're like in the grocery store and there's a guy in there, fire, just say thank you. Just say, I, look, it'd be, I, what did I do? No, no, just thank you, man. Just, just thank we, you. We had, a, we had a pet rabbit when I was a kid named Nightfire because my dad brought it home from a fire. My dad was a volunteer fireman and this rabbit, I don't know if, I forget if it was in the house I don't think it was in the house because then the family would have kept it. But he found it outside or something. It was this little baby rabbit. And he brought it home. And my mom was still in bed because this fire was in the middle of the night. And uh, he came into the bedroom. <laughs> and he said to my mom, he said, he said, hey, 
wake up. I've got something for you. And my mom said, yeah, yeah, I know what you've got for me. Go back to sleep. <laughs> and he's like, well, actually, it's a rabbit. And that's that's how we got one of our pets. Always the tan firefighters save baby rabbits sometimes. That's the moral of the story. We've learned and sometimes I'm just happy to see you. We're learned if you're the only one laughing at the joke, it's probably not very funny. Especially if it's your penis. Then what am I still doing here? My penis is hilarious though. And finally, we've learned. <laughs> just because okay. it, it it's Trump is pretty much the if someone else jumped off the bridge, would you jump too of politics? Don't jump off the bridge. Don't don't jump. Yeah. Make America white. No, no. No, no, sweetie, nope. no. No, no. You just don't jump off the racism bridge. That's that's not a winning slogan there. That's <sighs> This year sucks.